Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first video, which is um, a brief introduction to ethics in the broader session of the introduction to ethics. So it's a meta introduction. All right. So I think let's really start at the beginning and look at the question, what is ethics? Um, so ethics broadly seeks to answer the question of what should I do? Um, or more broadly, how should I live? So it's a type of moral philosophy. Uh, and so it's a branch of philosophy. And there's several types of ethics within the domains of, of moral philosophy. But first, let's have a look at what the, the purpose of ethics is. So the purpose of ethics is to, is to advance human flourishing and well-being. And this is obviously concordant with the aims of nursing. Ethics is also a systematic and rational enterprise. So it's about the practice and the exercise of deliberate reason. Ethics is also prescriptive. It tells us what we should do. It guides our practice and what we ought to do, not, not necessarily um, to reinforce what we are doing. So in this sense, it's similar to evidence-based practice. Uh, one of the references, Kerridge et al., describes ethics as universable. That is, it should apply equally to everyone. And it also states that that's, this concept is pretty controversial. And look, I agree. Look, I think ethics ought to apply to everyone equally, but we'll also look now only briefly in this subject about um, how this is problematic with different cultures and how it uh, might interfere with the exercise of justice, which is its own type of um, ethic. Um, and we'll also see that making strict rules can also be counterproductive. Now let's have a look at the main branches of uh, ethics. So there's several branches of ethics. For example, uh, meta-ethics is the basis of ethics. So it discusses the nature of right and wrong, um, from where we derive ethics from. And to be honest, we'll only briefly look at meta-ethics. It's, it's a subject that's mainly discussed um, you know, by philosophers. Descriptive ethics is about what we actually do, the type of ethics that we practice. So this is what this is what we call empirically based, which means that it's about evidence. Um, surprisingly, we won't look greatly in the subject of, uh, about descriptive ethics. It's mainly the, the province of social sciences, um, and you'll also see it in nursing research. And so you might see studies on nursing attitudes towards end of life issues, for example. And that would be an example of. Um, in, of nursing ethics and of descriptive ethics about what, what we do, what we think. So this session mainly concerns uh, normative ethics. And normative really is the study of what con constitutes right and wrong behaviour. And normative ethics also encompasses the development of moral frameworks, so theories, guidelines, um, systems, of, uh, systems of living, etc. Uh, and also, this subject really concerns applied ethics, which is the contextualization of ethical study into specific fields of practice. Now, in this instance, we're looking at um, the broad umbrella of bioethics, and the subset of bioethics is nursing ethics. Now, because much of the literature of clinical ethics is based around uh, research into medical ethics, you, you're going to see a bias towards this, especially the further back we go in time um, in some of the articles and textbooks. Um, now, you're going to see already that I've used some terminology. So firstly, look, let's look at, at the question of how ethics might differ from morals. Now, the two words really, uh, honestly, can be used interchangeably. They both come from similar roots in their respective languages. Um, ethics comes from the Greek and morals comes from the Latin, and they both originally meant habit or custom. Uh, one of the references for this uh, subject, Johnston, uh, 2017, um, states that there is no difference between those two words, but then Johnson just goes on to use them in two different senses. So I think it's worth talking about them and how they uh, are currently used in these two different senses. Ethics is usually used in, to, in English to describe the more formal study or practice of reason in relation to right and wrong acts. And it's also used when rules of practice or behaviour are codified. Now, an example of this is the Nursing Code of Ethics. And I've used ethics already in this sense um, at, at the beginning of this, uh, this discussion. But colloquially, um, in that is you know, more um, generally speaking, morals tend, tends is used to pertain to the personal or religious. Look, an example of that is we might talk about someone's personal moral code or personal um, morality. We also, and this is more strictly described as their uh, moral intuition, which is their personal sense of right and wrong. And of course, we all have our personal sense of right and wrong which might be culturally, religious, or in inherently uh, derived. Um, we also might talk about morals in the sense of re religion. 
um, because religions do have moral codes as well. And we also might use the word moralizing, which is actually a pejorative term for someone who is excessively self-righteous. I'm also going to refer to morals um, in the sense of moral theory, the moral theory in capitals. And this is the umbrella term to describe um, the body of normative uh, philosophy grouped under its broad definition. So there's several several of those definitions, there's several types of moral theories. And in this session, we're going to be talking about those. And um, just briefly, um, what what we will be discussing is the moral theories of deontology, uh, consequentialism, virtue ethics, feminist ethics of care, um, principalism, and then we'll look at some sort of uh, some other ones, which in less detail. Now, that's a broad overview of what ethics is, but I think it's also really important to look at what ethics isn't. So ethics isn't the law. Now, the two are obviously related, and they certainly influence each other. But something may be lawful, but also wrong when examined ethically. An example of that might be the laws against homosexuality that were in Australia in the 1970s. Something would also be illegal, but ethically sound. For example, the the possession and use of marijuana is illegal in in all states of Australia, but there's nothing particularly unethical about the personal use of this substance, particularly when other substances such as caffeine, alcohol and nicotine are freely available. Ethics also aren't a professional code of ethics. Um, And I've written in my notes, sharp intake of breath, (gasps) but it's right. The International Code of Nursing Ethics is not the same as ethical practice. We'll look at this a bit more detail later on, but codes of practice are really professional statements of acceptable conduct, and they might derive from sound ethical precepts, but they're not the same thing at all as ethical practice. And so we'll look at this confusing concept a little bit later on. Ethics is also not professional etiquette. Professional etiquette doesn't guide how we should behave to patients or fellow clinicians. It's just accepted rules of behaviour and can even be deferential Importantly, etiquette isn't a defence against behaving unethically either. For example, um, in the instance where a patient has been subject to inadequate treatment, we ought to advise them to seek a second opinion, even if that um, advisement is professionally discourteous to the clinician in question, because our duties are towards patients, not to the self-esteem of our fellow professionals. Also, ethics is not hospital policy. Hospital policy and their employment regulations are examples of of guidelines and contractual arrangements that don't have any bearing in questions of right and wrong in healthcare. I mean, obviously, if you ignore a clinical policy and then practice dangerously, that's that's going to be an ethical problem, and it's certainly a problem of competence. But hospital policies on patient referrals, for example, don't guide our moral conduct when it comes to whether we ought to refer a, a minor to a sexual health clinic without their parents' consent or knowledge. Ethics is also not religion. I mean, as far as I can tell, all religions have perfectly reasonable things to say about many matters of living a good life, how we should treat our fellow human beings and so forth, but they also have many inconsistencies. Furthermore, there is no consensus between different religions and different and, re- and religious precepts do not derive themselves from reason. So they cannot form the basis for ethical behaviour or ethical practice. Now, that isn't to say that we shouldn't not respect people's religious beliefs, but religious beliefs and practices are cultural phenomena, and they're they're not the the basis for ethical practice. Also, ethics is not public opinion. Now, hot-button topics like abortion and assisted dying are now socially acceptable and are now legal, but 40 years ago they weren't. So what makes them right or wrong is not public opinion or that they exist in law, but that they have a a basis in ethical reasoning. Now, another, I guess, an old example is the Greeks in 300 um, BCE derived systems of ethical practice that we still use today, and I'll discuss one of them later on. But the the Greeks back in 300 BCE also kept slaves. So what what is right or wrong is not a matter of what we do, which is the is, but it comes from what we ought to do, which comes from reason. Ethics is also not gut feeling. I sort of talked a bit about that earlier as being that sense of personal morals. And gut feeling is more formally termed moral intuition. Now, we don't expect nurses to practice um, healthcare, their nursing practice, just on gut feeling. We expect them um, to practice with evidence basis, with deliberation and sound judgment. And this is also the case for making decisions between what is right and wrong in healthcare. Um, This deliberation about what we do is ethical reasoning. Now, moral intuition might be really important and it might uh, inform 
uh, conscientious objection and so forth. And we'll talk about that later on in the in the, in the uh, topic uh, later on in the subject. But really, it's not a basis for ethical practice in this sense. So what we're going to cover next are the main moral theories which you may use for your own ethical reasoning to make your own ethical decision making um, yourself and as part of the clinical team. Because nurses aren't passive participants in this process and we aren't obliged and nor should we subsume our ethical contact uh, to others. So in the end, it's always our decision to do what we do um, and what is right is based upon what we think and what we uh, deliberate upon. So we're going to look at these theories more or less chronologically from how they've been used or studied in the past few centuries and how they've influenced healthcare over the last uh, century or so. One thing that I want you to keep in mind here is an open mind. These moral theories derive from the Western tradition in the same way that nursing theory and practice is derived in Australia principally from the nursing correction from the Western tradition. So you might pick this up that in many respects, this tradition is white, it's male, and it's Eurocentric and sometimes American centric. Now, this is slowly changing, but the next bridge for ethics to, to cross in clinical practice is more is to more completely accommodate diversity of populations, diversity of cultures, and diversity of thought. Um, and we're going to discuss that a little bit more over the next few weeks. Now, the first moral theory that we're going to look at is is, the, is deontology, which sounds uh, more intimidating than it is. And it mainly pertains to, to duties and, and, and a rule basis for ethical practice. And I guess, in a sense, it's similar um, in similar to what is in Judaism or Christianity in the in the tenets of the Ten Commandments, except rather than rely on religious authority, it relies on the authority of reason. So what I want you to do now is have a look at the pre-reading in in how in uh, deontology. Um, and in the next video, I'll try to make a sense of it. Cheers.